Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice, and today we're going to talk about glycemic index and what that has to do with choosing your foods for diet and for diabetes and other conditions. So glycemic index, very simply put, is how sugary a food is. More specifically, when you eat a food, it has a certain impact on your blood sugar and then your insulin levels. And we talked about that in carbohydrates and weight loss, so if you'd want to refer to that video. But when you eat certain foods, they have different impact on your blood sugar. So a glycemic index is a numerical value as to how good or how bad a food is in relation to blood sugar and insulin response. Uh, foods with a lower glycemic index are healthier for you and foods with a higher glycemic index are worse for you with the maximum number being a hundred and that's actually glucose or sugar taken is a hundred. That's as bad as it gets as straight sugar. So what you can do with glycemic index is try and choose foods that have a lower glycemic index and you can go online and type in glycemic index or glycemic index of vegetables or fruits and look through the list and see which ones have a lower number. So as an example for fruits, uh, cherries and plums and strawberries, apples, pears, are all low glycemic index fruits. You eat an apple and it has a lesser effect on your blood sugar and insulin and that's a healthier fruit. Uh, watermelons, pineapples, bananas, those are high glycemic index fruits so you want to avoid those type of fruits and choose ones that have a lower glycemic index. Uh, vegetables, broccolis and cabbage and beans have lower glycemic index. Uh, carrots and corn and beets have very high glycemic index so you want, want to avoid those type of foods if possible. Now sometimes if you eat a food by itself it has a certain glycemic index. If you mix certain foods, so if you have a pork chop and corn, uh, the pork chop is going to slow the absorption of the corn so it, it affects the glycemic index. So these are foods taken by themselves. Uh, the zone diet is a diet that talks about glycemic index and what it does is it balances proteins and carbohydrates. So as an example in the zone diet you get a little bit of rice or a little bit of pasta but you make sure you have protein like a pork chop or a piece of chicken with it and that slows the absorption. Uh, another example would be is if you look at sherbet versus um, ice cream, sherbet is fat free and that sounds great but it's actually a hundred percent sugar so it's literally like starting an IV and putting sugar into your bloodstream. Uh, ice cream has milk protein and fat in it and even though there's some sugar in it and the calories are the same or higher than sherbet it actually has a significantly lower glycemic index so if you were watching your diet based on glycemic index you would choose ice cream over sherbet. Uh, when you eat foods that are fat free, uh, that sounds good, but they generally have high sugar value instead of fat to make them taste good, and their glycemic index goes up as well. So you need to be careful about looking at foods because it says fat free, like sherbet, that's not necessarily better for you. So glycemic index, how sugary a food is, how it affects your blood sugar response and your insulin levels. It is absolutely affected by how you cook it. So uh, raw vegetables are going to absorb slower than cooked vegetables and have a lower glycemic index. Um, it has to do with what other foods are in your stomach. So if you have a pork chop and corn, that's going to lower the glycemic index of the corn because you have to digest the pork chop in addition to the corn as well. Uh, there's something called glycogen load, which is a little bit different than glycemic index and that's a total of how much sugar there actually is in a food. So if I ate an apple that has 20 grams of carbohydrates that has a certain glycemic load. If I ate two apples it has the same glycemic index but the glycemic or glycogen load is double because there's twice as many calories. So I, I mentioned before watermelon has a high glycemic index. The good thing about watermelon is, is it's mostly water and it has actually a low sugar content so the glycogen or glucose load of a piece of watermelon is low. It has a few grams of sugar only, but the glycemic index is high, so you have to play that into account as well. Uh, glycogen load or sugar load is different than glycemic index. So glycemic index, look up 
vegetables, look up fruit, glycemic index of foods, uh, pick and choose foods that are lower on the glycemic index and tend to eat those, tend to avoid uh, foods that have a high glycemic index, uh, mix protein or fat with your carbohydrates to slow the absorption. This is the concept of the zone diet. And if you haven't done so yet, look at my video on carbohydrates and weight loss. And that talks about why sugar and carbohydrates are bad and why cutting back on them helps you lose weight uh, related to insulin levels. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks. Thanks.